weight on some of you folks that's babysitting the problem. You have 30 seconds. Visitors, feel free to join us. We're about to go to the Word. I'm sorry now. Me and the devil had a tussle, but I won, but I won. Me and the devil. I'm sorry y'all don't like that kind. When peace like a river attended my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Can I get 50 of you? Whatever my lot 
thou hast taught me to say what it is well with my soul it is well with my soul oh it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, oh, seated it is well it is well with my soul my soul Love Jesus. Don't come up. My soul. Play that piano. Love Jesus. My soul. Love Jesus. You got to learn to go from praise to worship. I wish somebody would help me. My soul. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord Jesus, I love you, Dory. My soul. Help me right here. Lord Jesus. Come on. Bless. One time, let the church say it. Yeah. Come on, sanctify folk. Say it. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah.
We have so much to thank God for. We're so busy looking at the negative that we forgot to thank him for the positive. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done and in the process of doing, some of you won't talk, but it could have been me that did not wake up this morning or on the highway and got killed on my way to church. But the angels of the Lord, they protect us. The Bible uses the term encampeth around us. I'm grateful to be alive. With all the problems that surround me, I'm here. And it's by the grace of the almighty God. Touch somebody and tell them I'm glad to be here with you. No music. Let me uh, get these visitors acknowledged because I've got a word burning in my soul. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. Thank God for all of our leaders, our executive pastor, assistant pastor. Associate Pastor, y'all clap for them. Senior Father, Dr. Barbara. Grace and peace be unto all of you, tier leaders, elders, ministers, mothers of the church, musicians, saints, friends, and those who are enemies that are attending. We appreciate you being here, filling a seat in the house of God. Now, we have an unusual amount of visitors today. Shabak, y'all didn't clap for that. We have an unusual. Unusual amount for it to not be a holiday, Easter, New Year's Eve, Resurrection Sunday, Pentecost. There's some folk who decided we're going back to church. And they ought to feel honored sitting next to my members somewhere because these visitors are sprinkled out among you. From Orlando, Florida, these are the guests of James and Juanita Lockett. Stand briefly so we can thank God for our members who have brought members. Can we thank God for the Lockett family? These two guests is J Jacinda and Kenyon Ross Stan. And I know y'all clap for them. These are their daughter and grandson. So can we make them daughter and grandson? We thank y'all for coming. Facebook, someone came to uh, watching us on Facebook. They're from St. Cloud, Florida. And I want to say the name right if I don't forgive me because I have so many to mention. But it says that the end is silent. So I'm going to believe that it is Jackie Gomencia. Where are you, Jackie Gomencia? Am I saying that right? All right, let's thank God for our beautiful, lovely. Are you from Africa? Because I start to say princess because of this name. Y'all honor the motherland in our church. And if she would like to, Tannis, if she would like to sit closer, she can have one of those seats, because I said she could. Because I know who she is. You don't. People don't have to come. Oh, I know what I see. I'm a prophet all day, every day. From the plat platform of YouTube from Winter Park, Florida, Yvette Whitlock, where are you? So we can acknowledge all of these people. Thank you, Shabak, that sounds good. When you bring your mother, we just gonna stare like you did. 
Don't bring your family back here. Abbeville, Louisiana. Abbeville, Louisiana. Caitlin Bird is a member. Where are you, Caitlin? Caitlin Stan. We need to thank God for Caitlin. She brought with her Jace and BJ Broussard. Where are both of you? Can we thank God for Jace? Thank you. We love you, Caitlin. You look good. Keep bringing them to your crazy church so they can be like, where did you take me? Amen. Facebook, Orlando, Florida. No one's guest. They just found their way to this church. Ashley Minard. Where are you? Ashley Minard? Is it Minard or Minard? Yeah, you seem to got a breakthrough today. I've watched you. You seem to touch heaven today. You acted like, I'm glad I came. I pray that you get exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. And somebody ought to give a loud Shabbat praise for this woman. Orlando, Florida. They are from here. They are guests of our own Elder Javon Ferguson. Can we clap for him? Tanner Safford, where are you, Tanner Safford? Let's clap and thank God for her. If she in your section, y'all should overdose her. Tanner, are you married? No. And they didn't clap good enough for you. You gonna go somewhere and eat after this? Home? You wanna go to a re restaurant by yourself and eat wherever you wanna go? Do you want to take yourself out instead of waiting on somebody? You make up your mind now, no or yes. Make up your mind. Yes? Then come get dinner on me, because I don't like how they clap for you. Shabbat, y'all costing me money because I don't like how y'all treating my guests. I'm serious. I'm very serious. All right, amen. This person found us, believe it or not, on Google search. This is the first time I've seen this, and I need to see who this is because you are named after my biological mother. And I've only seen two people named that, and that is my mother and my niece. Janella Terry, where are you? Janella, where you at? Janella Terry, are you in here? I knew there couldn't be another. This says Google search, unless she left, y'all scared her out of here? Y'all scared my mother out of here? Bishop, this next guest, Bishop preached at my home church, which is Bethesda World Harvest International. Sure did several times. They are my best friends, Michael and Joyce Badger, Buffalo, New York. Destiny Gory, where are you? Let us love on you, Destiny Gory. And Deronda Savage, where are you? Can we clap for... Oh, I know y'all. I know y'all. They my guests. And I'm not sending them to dinner. Not having <laughs> I love them. YouTube, Jacksonville, Florida. This person is a pastor and we must learn to love on leaders. Pastor Tony Owens. Where are you? Please stand, Pastor Owens. Can we love on Pastor Tony? He said, man, you are one of my favorites. I'll be watching on you, YouTube. I love you. I love you. See, y'all got to learn. Love draws love. And some of y'all make me look bad because you under me, but you ain't got my oil. Y'all got to learn to love people. I'm a professional at loving my enemies. And I don't fake love them. I actually love them. I ain't got to hang with you, but I love you. 
from the Place, Louisiana, from the Place. That's out there past New Orleans and stuff. I remember that. I used to hang out there. They make some good food out there. Amen. Uh, they are guests of Bishop and Pastor Robinson. Please stand, the Robinson family. <laughs> Kimley Smoot, am I saying that right? Kimley, stand. Y'all clap for little Kimley. <laughs> Anias Marie Gerard, that sounds Creole. That's Creole. That's Creole, right? You don't even know about your own name. That's Creole. This is the bishop's sister and niece. Let's clap for Bishop Robinson's family. We're almost done. I told you this is an unusual day. God's up to something big. Don't let your faith dwindle because your uh, adrenaline is settling from dancing. Facebook, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I used to preach there. I used to have a church there. The young man who was the pastor is now pastoring in Fort Lauderdale, Pastor Joe Tubman of the Potter's House. We founded and covered that church for over 12 years. Bishop and pastor, it's Mikhail Levers and Tiffany Taylor. Where are both of you so we can love on you? Can we bless God? Oh, I know my son. That's my son there. He'll dance, he'll push me, and when he walk out, don't do no security. That's mine. Because he's untimely. He's so prophetic, he'll get up now, so leave the man alone. Facebook and YouTube, Junction City, Kansas. Junction City, Kansas. Is unique Hiram? Is Janice or Janice Hiram and Brandon Hiram? I'm excited about guests. I don't care what y'all say. YouTube, Mount Dora, Florida. Uh-huh. Did you find out how to pronounce this name? The one I asked you right there. I'm going to call you Sister Curlew. I want to know your first name. Therese? Not Teresa. Therese. Therese? Therese? Yeah, you ain't say that either. <laughs> the reason, I hate when folk try to act like they don't know what I'm talking about. That, that's how you get your head cut off, right? But Therese Curlo, thank you so much for coming to fellowship with us at our church. This says, Bishop used to fellowship with the late Pastor Al Jones. I didn't just fellowship with him. I helped him start his ministry, and I named his church. For whoever this is, I am the founder of Revelation. Preach for his mama. Al Jones was a shoeshine boy. That was his elder of the church. I have been in his life forever. And whoever this is, I want to hug on you because that name Al Jones means something to me. From Wilson, North Carolina, and from Virginia Beach, Virginia. The one from Wilson is Mother Mary Holmes. Stan, Mother Holmes, wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I don't hear nobody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mother Holmes, may I ask, what is your age? What? Some of y'all didn't hear it. Nine zero. Looking that healthy, walking that strong, smiling that jovial. Let's thank God for the new mother of my church. I'm making Mother Mary Holmes an honorary member of the Shabbat Church. And I'm making her my personal praying mother 
for Dr. Todd Hall as long as you should live on the face of the earth. And somebody ought to clap for my mother. She said, yes. Don't y'all mess with me now, I got one. I know we don't have a mother, but I got one. And her daughter is Noriah Holmes. Please stand, let's thank God for her daughter. And Bridget Holmes. Let's thank God for Bridget. Which one of y'all are from Al Jones Church? Bishop who? Really? Come here and hug me. I told you that I want to hug you. I saw y'all in the hallway, and I knew she was mine. As soon as I saw her, I said, Mother, we're going to get you a seat. That's the same grandbaby that I prophesied over. Come here, grandbaby. Y'all clap for them. She was two years old when I prophesied over. Some of you don't take this personal. I take it personal. Heard Bishop preach in Jackson, Tennessee. That had to be seven years ago or more. Bishop Brandon Porter and or, um, what's his name? Oh, it'll come to me. Philip and Mary Elaine Stewart and Philip Stewart Jr. Senior, Philip Senior, Philip Jr. and Mary Elaine. The Elaine, the Stewart family. Mary Elaine Stewart, <laughs> Philip Stewart, Philip Stewart Jr. Can y'all clap for them over in that section? Shimon Scales. If they heard from me, I was either at Shimon Scales. See, it just hit me. That's where I was preaching. We had a glorious time. It was crazy. We glad to have y'all all the way from Jackson, Tennessee. This one said that they are guests of uh, Bishop Hall. Is there another Bishop Hall in here besides me? No, 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 because there could be another, because sometimes they get me and Bishop mixed up, but that's his real name. So they be like Bishop, and this guy, Bishop, starts answering for me. But, but that's your name. This is my position. Alphonse Donzel, where are you? Oh, yeah. See, I ain't used to calling him that. Y'all better clap for him right now. Anthony, I know him as Don. Y'all clap for my brother. My friend. And his aunt is also one of my uh, praying mothers. Uh, Don, I hope you enjoyed what you heard. Because Don is cool by nature. His voice deep. God bless you. Yes. Don, are we okay? All right. Y'all clap for Don. And we're moving forward in Jesus' name. I need most of you, if not all of you, at 7 o'clock, put the fly up to meet me at the Rosen Center. I don't hear no one clapping. I need all of you to meet. All of you includes Howie. It includes everybody. Every member of this church I want to see you at the Rosen Center before 7. Church starts at 7. I'm going to ask Apostle Rockmore to put us up early because if we're there, we might as well start having church. They've had a great time already with Bishop Liston Page. Clap for Bishop Page. Last night, a few of the members and myself, we supported... Uh, Prophet Brian Kahn, clap for him as well. Clap better. Uh, Bishop Rockmore, Overseer Rockmore is preaching this morning. Clap for him. He's the host. And tonight, yours truly, will be doing the finale. I have been supporting every service I could. 
Sleep, I've had none. Thursday, I was there. By Friday, I want to thank the whole church, you that drove to Miami, Florida. Did we have church in Miami? Off the chain. Off the chain. It was terrible. We weren't supposed to get there because there was a glitch with Microsoft. All flights were canceled. My flight flew out. They canceled my flight coming back on yesterday. I had no flight until Sunday, and I would have not made it for you in service. So I love you all enough that I caught the Bright Line train coming all the way back. I don't hear nobody from Aventor. And let me tell you, my first experience was terrible because my train hit a car. I was enjoying the ride till I heard boom, and I said, oh, come on now. The devil did not want us to assemble today, but we're better together. Got news by that night that the person who was hit did not die at all, and I'm excited. I don't hear nobody about life. Please meet me there. Let me be proud again. But I was definitely a proud pastor in Miami. The way y'all acted and showed up in great numbers, that's a huge sacrifice. And I love all you. I gave you my best. And I want to thank Bruce for coming to play for his pastor. I don't hear nobody in Miami. He learned some things while he was there. He should have told y'all. He learned some things while he was there. You didn't tell him, huh? We ain't the baddest band in Florida. We're not. You didn't tell them, huh? You got to tell them for them to understand. It is online. Bruce was killing them till that boy took over and Bruce looked and said. <laughs> and you should have because there's always somebody better than all of us. God will always give us something to reach for. Can I get a witness? And the young boy who was playing the bass, who's one of the baddest in the world, I bought him his first bass when he was 11 years old. And I told him he will play all over the world. He's playing for Flo Rida, Jill Scott, playing for everybody. He can play the organ, the drums, the guitar, equal, huh? Oh, see, oh, see? he said he cold. So once you think you've arrived, you don't know whether you arrived till you step out of your bubble. You step out of your bubble, I don't hear nobody. But I don't care what nobody say, we still got the baddest band in the land, regardless of how it go. I hear a lot of what we do here being repeated all over the world. I want to make one more announcement, then I won't preach to you long. I'll just cut the sermon short because we had, um, because most of my sermon was spelled, spent on visitors. I'm going to start cut, cutting that back in a minute. But if folk don't come, then I'm going to keep announcing them, you know. But um, a member of our church had a wonderful uh, experience on Friday that I couldn't attend because I had to be in Miami. And ministry is first, but I checked on them all. I want you to watch this photo first. Let's get the photo up. This is a photo of all the men that supported that event. There goes Deacon Jackson, Deacon Mixon, there goes senior father, there goes associate pastor, and then there goes her family, her members and her supporters. They were there for something grand. The next picture, the next one is a video. I want you to watch and listen, cut it up loud so they can hear it. All right, let's go. Family and friends that are here to help support Ms. Robinson and Gila. Louder. If you are in favor of this adoption, give me a double thumbs up.
grant the petition, sign the final judgment of adoption, and allowing Mila to be your daughter and forever known as Mila Elizabeth Robinson. Yes. There goes you. Final adoption done. This is a legal daughter. Clap for Mama Chantel Robinson. How many African American single women, no children, no husband would take on a responsibility like that? I don't want to hear nobody from this church saying nothing negative about that girl. Because you always got haters. She could have had her own baby. Mind your business. Take care of your children. No, there's always someone, Dr. Tracy, looking for something derogatory. Huh? Good. Berlin said, I got her back, so they better not try that coming up in here. Y'all ain't gonna mess with her now, because y'all see Berlin stand up. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't gonna mess, mess with her. Get your Bibles. This may be the quickest sermon y'all ever heard me preach. This church. This may be the quickest sermon you have ever heard me preach. But if y'all just push me and meet me tonight, I'll be okay. I want to talk about, because we're doing a series on faith, and I need three people to catch me. I want to talk about a faith that turns into frustration. The front row ain't talking to me already? A faith that frustrates. Most people and talk to me that are faithful are also frustrated. And they're frustrated because of the trespassing of the unfaithful. I personally, and I wish I had a church, don't like when my loyalties are questioned. Especially when I'm loyal to a fault. I'm already preaching, I told you. When a person is faithful, they also, this is not an English word, but I'm using it, they are also fightful. Full of fight. Nothing makes them more angry than when you question their loyalty. Father, help me talk. But what do you do when the God you serve tells you to leave them alone? To you that are clapping, you're giving me strength. I'm going to take a nap and preach tonight. And I hear some of you that are preachers and governors of God's holy writ. You're asking a question. The question that you're asking is, should they get away with everything? Young adults, talk to me. The answer, and I'm going to preach it, is yes, no. Now, Bishop, you sound a little bipolar. 
your borderline schizophrenia because I need to know how to deal with my real issues. Is the answer yes or no? The answer is yes, no. I'm going to answer it and see who stands. Then I know I didn't waste my study. It's yes, they should get away with it, but no, they won't because God said vengeance is mine. Vengeance, let me preach. You listen, you eat, you regurgitate. Vengeance belongs to God. Will you pass that down your sanctified row until everyone has heard that proclamation? Vengeance belongs, Han, she pass it down to God. Even though you're qualified to handle it yourself, it actually belongs to God. Pastor, Pastor Tony, there are scriptures that could coincide with it for those helping me preach. It says, the battle is not yours. Now, you that are frustrated, it's because you can fight. I don't talk trash that I cannot back up. And if I tell you I'm going to get you, don't sleep. You may not get it till two months, but don't sleep. See, that is not vengeance. That is vindictive. See, I got to preach to some of you anointed people who are still too gangster in your ministry. Which takes away from who God says he is in your life. So there's some things I want to handle that I can't handle, but I have to pray that he will handle it. And the best way he handle, handles it for three folk is he prepares a table. Y'all don't like this. Not in the absence of your enemies. He invites your enemies to your victory party. But if you fight, you got to throw your own party. And you may not have nobody there but the few flunkies that told you to fight. Most folk who tell you, if I were you, I'd tell them off. They can't fight. You know, most people pick the fight, but they won't get in the fight that they pick. This is not on my paper, but I am going to say this anyway for three people who will say amen. Why does God keep anointing thugs? Look at folk. Uh, uh, you know who you are. Don't, 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 don't. Why does God keep anointing people who need anger management? Why does... Why does God keep anointing you cussing saints? Why do God... Now look at y'all acting holy. He ain't talking about me. Yes, I am. There was a king named Saul. I'm about to read my text and holler. Princess, pray for me. There was a king named Saul who got jealous of David. So let me tell you how all this frustration starts for five or six people who talk to me. It starts off with you doing nothing and somebody just jealous of who you are. This is how it begins. It has no real foundation. Now, you that ain't talking, I'm going to believe you the troublemaker or you the middle person that causes all these fights. And you that are talking, you the one who want to fight, but instead you got to nurse your frustration. You either on one side or the other. You ain't middle. And David did everything to support King Saul, everything. Even married his spoiled daughter. Even played evil spirits off of Saul. 
And because a group of women, y'all don't want me to preach, got in public and sang a song, and the lyrics of the songs were this, for those who catch me, Dave, I mean, Saul killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. Saul got jealous over what the women were saying, comparing his victories to David. You can't help their jealous because you didn't put your name in their mouths. They just, oh, y'all, God is just making everybody talk about you everywhere. And now you're gaining enemies simply because God has my name in various places. Look at somebody that don't need anger management. Tell them your name is spreading like wildfire. Tell them that's to build your business. That's to get you the right spouse. That's to make sure you graduate. Tell your neighbor, God's putting your name in some great places. The problem, Bishop, is this. Once God puts your name there, you get comfortable with sitting at those tables and you forget it ain't your name, it was his name. So now you start phasing God out of the table because now he's giving you a jump start. Now that's when you start having to fight Goliath. Something big is going to happen. Y'all ain't talking. That's going to make you wish that you had kept your appointments with God. I've got three people clamping. My, my statement that I'm building on is why does God keep anointing thugs? Y'all forgot. Why does he keep anointing people that need anger management? Why does he keep anointing people that will cuss you out? What? Why did he put that oil on a person with a better reputation and, and somebody that can tolerate foolishness? Y'all, Why did he put that grace, y'all quiet, upon the lives of people that'll let you slap them and they just walk off? Why, why me, Lord? I won that before I got saved. I, I don't know how, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to just walk away. If I got 10 folk like that, jump up and be honest and say amen. amen. You may be seen. David had nothing to do with it. But then David decides, because he's a little thuggish. Remember, before David is anointed, he done kill lions. All right, the front row, he done kill bears. And he's been doing this with his bare hand. David's a bad boy. Look at somebody for the first time and get a little self. Uh, I want you to just be a little arrogant and tell your neighbor, I'm a bad somebody. Say it with some, say it with some type of security, some type of flair, some type of charisma, some type of swag. You know how far God has brought you, and you know that through many toils and snares, yo, I have already come. It was grace. It was grace that's brought us safe thus far. And we need grace, Rob, to lead us on. I'm going to preach this and just, just give me a minute. David decides that if he's actually Saul going to kill me, I'll take him out first. Because if I know you're coming for me, and I know I can't get away from you, May the best person win. David even killed Goliath, who was after Saul. Y'all not talking about God. Saul asked David to wear his armor. See, and David said, I can't because it's not been proven. Dr. Barbara, I need you to talk to me because some of y'all going to miss where I'm going. I never preach something if you ain't in it.
That's why you got to pay close attention, not to people, to the text. Because the text is there to help you pass a test. That's why a lot of you after church, bitch, I need to talk to you. Because you didn't listen to the sermon at all. And your answer is not really in me. I can give you guidance, but the answer is in the word of God. That's why the old church said, in the word of God, I've got a hiding place. David said, that word have I hid in my heart. Talk to me, Father, you're loud, that I might not. Some of you keep falling because you have no text. And if you have no text, you will pass no test. You got to stop letting your feelings be your Bible. And let the word of God increase your faith. The Bible said faith cometh by hearing. Talk to me, young people. And hearing by David said, I'll get him, and David plotted. Oh, yeah, y'all thought I wasn't going to say this because I saw y'all threw me for the loop, but I'm back. I want to say this about this. I want to say this just about Saul's armor. When I say this, the first two that jumped for real because you caught it, your victory is right around the corner, and that's this. David did not wear it because if he wore it, Saul would have got credit for what he didn't do, right? <laughs> And sometimes God has to strip you of who you are not. Oh, y'all, so that when you get victory, it's yours. So he lets folk abandon you, stop calling you, all kind of thing. Because now this is a battle that you must win. High five two people, tell them I must win. I must win. Quitters never win and winners never quit. David finds Saul sleeping one day in a cave. This is for my anointed people who want to handle things that you can and you need to catch up with my mentality. David catches him and David and his boys say we're going to kill Saul tonight and we're going to get over this because I can't enjoy life being chased. He can't, y'all missed it. I can't enjoy life on the run. I'm just running and running and running. Now, I need to say this to three people who will jump, who claim you know the Bible and went to pseudo-seminary or school of divinity or got the name honorary doctor on something, but you actually don't know the Bible. I need to say this to you and hope you can catch it. God never verbally spoke to David until this text that I'm talking about. Everything David did, he did in an honorable way in the name of God. And when he got out of order, God sent a prophet. Oh, y'all and, and his prophet was Nathan, and Nathan told him a story, and then Nathan said, you're the man. And when he had to get married and get back in line, God sent the same prophet. Y'all quiet and said, speak. So God was speaking to David through his prophet. I know y'all don't like that he's doing that today. Because you want people to believe you hear from God for yourself. So if you did hear from God, why are you in the situation that you're in? That you're waiting who you heard from to get you out of. Oh, no, don't look away now. Look right up here. How did you get in there? Because the Bible said, let no man say when he is tempted, he's tempted of God. God does not tempt anyone. But here's what Paul said about God. If you're hearing from God and just made honest mistakes and you jump up and scream, he said, if you get into something and admit it was your fault, there's no temptation common unto man where God will not make a way of escape. 
Oh, y'all. Qu- and some of you won't even escape. You rather keep fighting in your mistake. You are still defending a mistake that you made. Some people hate to admit they're wrong. If you've ever been wrong before, then confess it to a neighbor, the neighbor of your choice. Since I've known executive pastor, she ain't never been wrong. Neither has her brother. Neither has her sister. And the reason why there are in our families family feud is no one wants to take the high road and just say, I'm wrong. You're not wrong when you say I'm wrong, but. There is no but after admittance that I'm wrong. There is no but. Let me say something on my defense. There's none of that. When you are wrong... When you say it's my fault, but I need to tell you what you can't do because you triggered me. No, I don't need to be coached. Either you wrong or keep defending your wrong. For three folk who stand with me, I am fighting to be right. And that's an uphill journey. Y'all ain't talking to me because there's so many things you want vengeance over because now people look like they can just keep doing what they doing But you've got to have some tenacity to understand the future is your victory. Let me flip it for talkers. Your future is in making it where God asks you to be. Not fighting where you are to win. I'm shocked folk ain't talking to me because First Lady Pastor Robert, she got an anger management problem too. None of these folk are fooling me. I don't care about all that. He come up Shonda, yeah, yeah, they got anger issues. It ain't because you from Louisiana. We fight in Brooklyn. Drop that Creole down in L.A. and see who wins. Y'all better stay in the dirty south. Don't y'all come from out of there. You better ask Little Wayne and everybody. You better ask all your homies. See, the issue is she's going to defend Louisiana because I said we will defend without knowing we're wrong and you believe you're that strong, but you've never been to Los Angeles. So how can you defend something you have no experience in? I've been to Louisiana. Y'all will get your behinds killed going to L.A. And that's why God's so kind. He's not leaving you in the battle where you can lose. But you lose until you admit that I'm wrong. See, that part was beat out of me when I was a child. I know y'all want me to say I think I'm always right. I really don't, but when I'm right, I sure defend it. And that's a problem too. But let me say this for three folk who will talk to me. My daddy and grandparents grew up with this one rule. Don't lie to me. All right, I had nobody else. And then they said, if you tell a half a lie, it's a whole lie. I'm going to beat you more for that. And if you were raised like that, every time you get ready to lie, you'd be like, hmm. You have a flashback of you being five years old and they beating you while they holding your hand. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They used to beat the little kid. Oh, y'all don't remember when I when was holding you in church, they take you to the bathroom spank you and tell you, get in there, be quiet and don't you move again. When you get correction early, See, some of you are grown making mistakes because you didn't take correction. 
early. How do you save Holy Ghost Field 20, 30 years and need a therapist? What didn't you listen to early? Now you got to pay for a therapist because early on you wouldn't pay for attention. You didn't pay attention. My father used to say them lines that don't work no more. This going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I'd be like, no, it don't. Let me beat you. <laughs> My father, I thought he was off his rockers for 10 folk. Because after they beat you real good, they say, now go wash your face and come eat. Oh, y'all weren't raised right. Even those who did it ain't saying amen. I ain't hungry. I didn't ask you to come eat because either you eat now or you don't eat at all. Can I have another piece of chicken? You mad, but you eat it. Some of y'all still look like an anger man. You frowning on the sermon. But let me help five people who will scream. Go ahead and be hurt, but don't lose your appetite. Every morning you wake up, tell pain and hurt, I've got some work to do. Y'all in. And the first job is to work on yourself. You need to take at least an hour a day. Reflect. How did I handle myself today? How did I handle business today? How did I treat my friends today? How did I treat my family? How did I treat my enemies? How did I act in the midst of adversity? Look how quiet y'all are. I never thought of that before. Now you know it. You need to, every day before you close your eyes, you need to give yourself a self-examination on how did I behave today overall. Y'all ain't talk. Tell somebody, tell them, I'm going to adapt that. Now I'm going to adapt that. I do it every night. I do it every night. Every night. Every night. I got it somewhere. I ain't going to say because they'll then find it and know everything about me. But I write it. And I've given myself a couple of F's sometimes. And every place, Dr. Tiffany or Tiffany, every place where I got an F, I revisited that. It took me a little while because I had to swallow pride. But then I called that person. Can we talk? I know it's been three years. Y'all... <laughs> It ain't been that long for me, but for some of y'all, it's been a long time. I just want to get this out of my spirit and off my heart so I can live freely. You know, I can't get nobody. And you say the part you did. Don't bring back up what they did. Don't make them the reason. Let them know that you matured and that it would not have happened if you didn't put yourself in that predicament. Look at somebody and tell them, now that's honesty for you. I'm about to preach now. David gets ready to kill Saul. When he gets ready to kill Saul for the first time in his whole existence, Izzy, for the first time, Sister Tawana, for the first time, uh, uh, Brother brother Bishop, uh, Sister, uh, 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 all of y'all that are here, David hears God for the first time, one time loud, and this is what God tells David about somebody who's trying to kill him. Touch not my anointing. Oh, y'all, and do my prophet no harm. Even though the Bible says Saul was wicked and fired, God still called Saul his anointed and his prophet. I don't care who's doing you wrong. That's why they saved, but they ain't safe. Y'all ain't talk. If they're still saved. They just don't know how to behave with you because they're jealous of your existence. And God says, my orders not to them, but to the innocent one is touch not my anointed. God was not defending the innocent. I mean, the guilty party. God was not, let me rework that. God was not defending the innocent party. He said, you feel you have the right to get them because they're coming after you. But I'm telling you, they're still mine. Bail out, because if you kill them, they're going to say, I wish I could run. 
that what I anointed you to be, which is the king, you had to kill somebody to be it. He said, I don't want none of you in this promotion. I want you to leave him where he is, and when I wipe him out, you take the seat. But if you have any activity in the situation, I get no glory. I got one rule in this church. If you're going to stand up, speak up. Yeah, don't stand and just stare at me. I'm from Brooklyn. That, you know, that looks like you want to fight. Shatea, your birthday's over. Start talking to me. Your birthday done. Come back to the church. It is too critical that y'all stop trying to get victory where God says he'll get it for you. I'm going to talk to talkers. And if God be for us. See, somebody say who, but then another scripture say he's more than the whole world. He even said this for those praising, getting strength. Lo, I'll be with you. Not with them. I'll be with you always. Bishop, you're preaching and I'm examining myself, never heard you, but I still have a little uh, issue with your sermon because what do we do with all of this energy that keeps compounding? Like this is Pine Hill energy, this is Kissimmee energy, this is Washington Carver, this is Carver energy, this is, this is not Windermere and Ocala energy, this is... This is OBT kind of energy. This is Paramore and Jackson Street kind of energy. This is this 50 going west, Bishop. This is the only reason why all of this is happening to some of us, and I'm gonna give you five seconds to express love and give God the energy and praise instead of fighting, is because your promotion is right around the corner. And if you can get distracted and disturbed, you will have to start over and will never make it because you will not have enough energy in your reserve to go through it again. I got to get victory first time around because I don't have a reserve. I know when women make a mistake and get pregnant, y'all got a plan B. But in this fight, there ain't no plan B. You can't take a pill and get victory in this. Look at the women that got quiet because I said plan B. If you didn't do A, you wouldn't need plan B. You I just messed up the whole sermon, the whole sermon, the whole, won't, 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 the whole sermon. God told David, touch not my, which meant God labeled Saul still a prophet, still anointed. Here is where three of you should jump because you're good Bible people and I'm almost ready to read the scripture and yell because I can't help it. And that's this for my three people who will jump. They're still who they are, still anointed, still called of God, just not being used. And some people hate you because you're doing what they used to do. Oh, y'all. And, and they recognize you'd have never been used if they didn't fall off somewhere. Now they got to fight you to make you fail so they can supposedly get their position back. (sighs) 
I'm going to speak over the members of this church and a few visitors if you believe in what I do. You don't have to, but members, I pray that you will. I'm going to speak this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith that by Wednesday, your biggest battle will be over. Your greatest hardship, your toughest situation will be on the decline. Because you need that energy to finish your business. I don't need to be burning the candle at both ends of the stick. I'm glad I'll be here Wednesday now that I'm thinking about it. So now, let me read just these verses, and then let me be me for another five minutes, then you can go. <sighs> there go my want, wanting to preach. I feel like preaching when I do that. Luke 22, verse 31 through 35. Luke 22, verse 31 through 35. This is our only scriptures. I've been giving you a long dissertation from the books of Samuel and Chronicles, partially Kings, about the life of David and King Saul. If you want to read their whole stories, you can go to the book of Samuel, first and second, and you can see how everything translates and comes together. But Luke 22, verses 31 through 35, and please hear how it is written. And some of you that claim to be anointed, make me preach. The Lord said, Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you. I'm going to say this for screamers. If you are Satan's desire, you are God's chosen. Now you need to know that. You need to know that. Why is the devil always picking on you? Because God picked you. Satan does not want folk who sit on the sideline. He wants people that God is saying, your time to get in the game. <sighs> Satan have desired to have you and mm, that he may sift you as wheat. But look what Jesus said for the first time in the Bible do we hear these words. Jesus said, the only reason why Satan can't get you, I prayed for you. Now I'm talking to five people. It's different when you pray to God. And God decides, let me pray for you. Your prayers might go unanswered. But his prayers... I always answer. Why don't some of y'all talk to God tonight and say, Lord, I don't want to pray to you. Pray for me. Lord, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you say a prayer. But tell him now, what you waiting on? Somebody pray for me. They had me on their mind. They took some time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My mama prayed for me, my grandmama, whoever. Now, Dr. Sharon Davis, this is how you translate this and put it in your heart. Ten of you jump for your pastor now. And that is, when you ask God to pray for you, the way you know that he's praying, some of you ain't going to catch it, is somebody out of nowhere calls and says, you've been in my spirit, and the Lord told me. And you ain't going to like this. Sometime when God's praying, he'll make an enemy call and say, I just want to say sorry. Run. Now when God's praying, he'll make a baby's daddy pay child support. When God is praying. He'll make somebody interviewing you say, you need a degree, but I pray for someone like you. I'm going to talk to you. Talk. God will put you in somebody's dreams. Yeah. 
A flat. Yeah. But I prayed for thee. And look what God's prayer was so that we're back in focus and I need my church to scream. My prayer was that your faith He means, he's telling this person, you ain't going to make it through this test because your faith ain't strong enough. I'm not praying for you. I'm praying for your faith. Oh, y'all. And I'm praying that your faith fail you not. God ain't never failed nobody. Your faith did. I'm going to talk to you, talk back. God ain't never not showed up. Your faith was too low for what you were in. And the reason why your faith was low, you were absent from church, absent from Bible study, absent from Sunday school, hanging out with folk that don't put no word in you, talking to folk that always have negative conversation. You got to put your soul in a place where it can hear a word from the Lord. And while you're trying to figure it out. While you're trying to figure it out, the Lord has already worked it out. I wish somebody would scream on this, his mercy endureth. And if God spoke it, it will come to pass. I need to make God pray for me by saying this to y'all. God is not a man that he should lie. If God sent you somewhere, you don't leave in defeat. You, he has you there for a reason, and that is to fight the good fight of faith and not allow your frustration to shift your destination. Where you're most frustrated, you are most needed, but God, the devil, has people there to make sure that they exhaust your faith. They cannot exhaust what we don't give them access to. You can hurt my feelings, but you won't mess with my faith. My faith looks up to thee. Y'all quiet. Thou lamb of Calvary, old school, savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Lord, take all this guilt away. Lord, let me from this day be holy thine. What was the Mashandai? I'm sorry. I got the Holy Ghost too. What was the prayer request of Jesus for Peter? I pray that your faith <sighs> fail not. And when thou art converted, teach that same lesson to your brother. What faith says in two words for ten folk who will tell two people and tell them with power is simply hold on. That's what faith tells you. I know you want to let go. I know you want to run in the opposite direction. But faith says there's no victory if you shift destination. You must get victory where you are. If not, your new destination will have a new fight. You're going to still have a battle. You got to win somewhere. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. In four minutes, I'm going to preach to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you. Come on, get there and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, y'all preaching, and my answer. When thou art converted, a flat, I'll be there when thou art converted. Strengthen thy brother. Stop draining each other. 
If you're going to call me, text me, send me some strength. And after he tells Peter that I'm praying for you, Peter then says in verse 33, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and you got to be careful of folk that say I'm down with you like four flat tires or whatever they want to say. You got to be careful with these phonies learning new sayings that they can't stand by. Because most of the folk that say they with you are the ones the devil get in to hurt you. He can't hurt you through what's far away. He's got to get in something close. I wish y'all would talk to me now because I'm about to preach. But Peter says, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison. Let me hear that A flat. Yeah, both into prison and to death. But then Jesus said to Peter, the cock shall not crow this day. See, y'all forgot this part. Before that thou thrice deny that you even know me. You talking all this trash. But within the next 24 hours, you're going to go through the biggest test of your life. God is putting your words to test. You said, God, if nobody go, I'll go. So he took everybody away to see whether you still go. You said, if my husband don't act right, I'm with you. So now your husband ain't acting right. And we want to see whether you're going to stay with him. Your words put yourself in this position. That's why I called this sermon, if they look right here, subtopic, watch your mouth. May the words of my mouth I can, and the meditation of my heart. Y'all know the Bible, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A flat, I'll be there. Amen. Some of you want the hoop, but you better get help first. After you holler, you better be able to finish your test. Thirty-five, Peter said to him, Jesus said to them, when I sent you without purse, scrip, shoes. Did you lack anything? I'm going to have 30 folk help me have church in a minute. They said nothing. He told them the reason why you had no job, no this, no that, but never missed a meal, always dressed well, had a roof over your head, is because I prayed for you. This ain't because of your faith. Your faith is used for the fight. You pray for houses and things, and God decides what he wants to give you, but your faith didn't get that. Seeking him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those things were added. Your faith is to help you with your frustration. Your faith is to help you with strength. Y'all need to, your faith is for bigger battles and spiritual warfare, not from who don't like you and who took your boyfriend. You do not need faith for that foolishness. You need faith because faith is giving you strength to head in a direction to sit on the throne that you didn't qualify to ever sit on because you were not born in that family. You went from the hood to the kingdom. Get somebody by the hand and tell them, I don't know how I got where I am, but I'm here. And then tell the same neighbor, I don't know how I'm going to get where I'm going, but I'm on my way. And then put a scripture on there. My God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. If he's the same, I'm almost there. Just shake a neighbor that ain't mad with you and tell him God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. My last statement, my paragraph. This is Mahashanda Baho. 
Let me make this strong prophetic proclamation first until 7 p.m. And 10 of you start jumping because that's the way you're going to get it. And that is after Wednesday, you will lack nothing. No music, just you. Watch it. The road has been rough. And the going, a hey baby, has been tough. And the hills have been hard to climb. But I started out. I didn't want to hoop there, but I felt that a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. That I made a decision. Yeah. And that decision is. God is my choice. Will you tell three people that. And tell them like you got victory. God is. My choice. This is. My last. Statement. What you nosy, valley nosy preachers should be telling them is that with all the information I gave you, I only got two paragraphs on my page. My notes for this sermon looks like that. Get a close up. My notes need help. Those are my notes. Normally, my notes are through the whole page. I was in my office trying to study. And the Lord said, you write the scripture and let me preach. <laughs> I told the Lord, do your thing. Because if you preach it, it's got to come to pass. You ought to grab somebody that ain't playing and tell them, it shall come to pass. You didn't say it with power. Find somebody else with a little more security and say, it shall. Oh, oh it shall come to pass. My last statement, God daughter, then I preach a little bit like your 96 year old granddaddy says this. After you heard Paul, Simon, Simon talking this trash about he'll be there with Jesus the next day, uh, he says he don't even know him. So don't you feel bad when folk betray you? I thought we were best friends. You got to always leave. An opening for change. And let me help 10 folk who want to get a million dollars worth of business. If you call them your best friend, they may not be yours, but you stay theirs. Teach them. You didn't lose nothing. They lost someone. Now, here's my closing message. And I only expect three of you to scream because I have no more to say. It is very important through the communication that Jesus and Peter just had that we understand that our faith or confession of our love for Jesus Christ, that when that love is expressed, a sense of pride and arrogance comes along with it. I love you, Lord. Now you're arrogant. I love the Lord. Now you're throwing in people's face. But God now has to create a situation and design it to see if you really love him the way you say you did. Oh, y'all don't hear. So he quickly lets you get in something that creates humility. 
He wants to see how down you are with him. So every situation you've been going through after you said, Lord, I love you, has been a test. Everything after you had your greatest uh, experience with God has been a hellacious battle. The next 24 hours might be difficult, but Wednesday is a victory. You've got to remember that Monday and Tuesday has nothing to do with stopping what's coming Wednesday. I made, I made up in my mind that for God I'll live and for God I'll die. You ought to shake somebody's hand. I feel like I'm traveling. And get them by the hand and look them in the face and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Ask your neighbor, how did you survive it? Tell him I stood on the word of God. Tell him I don't know what God's prayer was for me. But the mere fact that he's praying tells me I'm going to come out of this all right. My faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary. Savior, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray, Lord, take all my sins away, Lord, let me from this day be holy thine, take your right hand or your left hand, whoever's close to you. Push them away from you and tell them, don't come back over here unless you believe in my destiny. Because tell them I got 72 hours to come out of what I'm in. But I'm going to act like I'm out of it right now. I can't. I can't. Came to Jesus. Just as I was weary, worn, and sad, but I found in him. Some of y'all near a hater right now. They won't even help you praise him. But tell your neighbor it's okay, because Wednesday is a sure thing. Tell him I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. I've been buked and scorned. I've been talked about. Sure as you born. I've been up and I've been down. I've been leveled to the ground. But as long as I've got chips, I don't need nobody else. Lean on your neighbor and say all of your lions have just died. All of your bears have just died. All of your giants have just died. All of your bills are paid. All of your burdens have been lifted. All of your tears have dried up. We've been endure for a night but joy I can hear y'all joy 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 it's coming in the morning shake another neighbor's hand Montez and say neighbor you ain't gonna believe this I'm praising God for you not me today just you and the reason why I'm forgetting me to praise for you is I'm an answer to God's prayer I'm not gonna let the devil have you I'm not gonna let you lose I'm not gonna let you give up 
I'm not going to let you throw in the towel. My message is to you. Hold on. Shake somebody and tell your neighbor. Hold on. Just a little while longer. These heavy bottoms, they'll soon pass over. Run the ring. Run the ring. I may not preach tonight, let's have church. Shake somebody else's hand and say, neighbor, I need you to get excited about Wednesday. And say, neighbor, I'm gonna give you some words to an old school devotional song. When I finish giving you these words, if you don't get excited, that's your business. Hear all the words. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold, if I hold, if I hold, if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Yeah, victory, yeah, victory. Come on, Shabbat Hollow when you feel it. Yeah, victory shall be mine. Shake a name and say it's yours. I said, shake him like a song shaker. And say, neighbor, whatever you need, it's yours right now. Y'all know preachers having fun now. But when they have fun, they say, whoa, 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 whoa. It's yours right now. Shake them and tell them you got victory from the crown of your head. y'all look too deep for me glory sit down somewhere and find somebody who got all their faith back and they're telling the devil today you're gonna regret what you did to me and my family you're gonna regret what you did to my children you're gonna regret that you touched my business because for the next 48 hours i'm gonna be giving god glory and on Wednesday morning, hey, Lord, on Wednesday morning, I'm coming out with my hands up. Yeah! 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 your neighbor say neighbor I don't know if you're a hater in disguise or really in my corner but I'm gonna ask you to prove to me that you're an answer to prayer by praising God for me you can do it in a dance you can do it in a clap you can do it with a hug you can do it by running but you got 30 seconds Is 
Young Leela. Praise him, Janae. Praise him, Bishop Robinson. may not believe me as your pastor and as visitors as the messenger for you this Sunday but some of you are a little afraid to give God a full throttle praise because stress and frustration still has you by your ankles and confusion depression has you by your mind but if you want to ever be violent don't be violent with a person be violent with the devil and make him mad by how hostile you are with your praise. You've got 60 seconds to pick him up and put him down in the name. Praise him, Nakia. Some of you taking this too lightly. Oh, Lord. Praise him, charity. Praise him, Shatea. Put a little icing on the cake, then we going so we can be rested for tonight. Soft on the drum machine. And listen to me. When Microsoft had, they call it a glitch. Some people say they were hacked. It, whatever it is, it ain't fixed yet. It affected banks, hotels, flights, everywhere. It even canceled tickets. People are stuck like our assistant pastor. He's stuck in New York at the airport. They put him off the plane because it ain't fixed. But this is what the Lord told me on the bright side. This is for only 30 of my members and 10 of the visitors. He says, if I want to make people rich out of nowhere, I can get in the computers right now. I can pay off your mortgages. I can pay off your bills. And if you believe God, you need to praise him right now. It might be fixed. 
All right, 20 seconds, I mean it. Watch it, Deacon Kevin. Watch it, son. That's the okay seat. Watch it, bro. Watch it, Mike. Oh, I wish I had some help. Some of y'all don't want to praise him. We're about to go. I'm clearing the floor for this reason, then we're gonna give and go home. But tonight I need all of you there, it's a prophetic moment. But let me say this, the only people I want dancing now are people who will confess through their praise. I'm in something right now that I'm dealing with. I feel like I've been in it too long or it's been in me long enough. And I really, Bishop, need this thing to go. It could be an addiction, a habit, a situation, a lawsuit, a person, a relationship, a bad deal. I promise you in Jesus' name, by faith, that if you praise him, that thing will be resolved by Wednesday. You've got 30 seconds, and we got to go home.
don't praise the Lord. We don't praise the Lord. We don't praise the Lord. no music what's your expression Now your heads, close your eyes. We are about to exit here. Get on the piano. Same key. Piano. to mean this. You got to stop doing church like a routine. I never do that. We give you two more times. Let me hear all of you.
to God now. Let's sing it to him. Let's sing it to him. Let's sing it. One more, but y'all gotta follow me. Come on. If you can sing it, let's go. What you're feeling right now, softly, what you're feeling right now is liberty. He who the sun sets free. We're free indeed. Don't you dare go home and start nursing that frustration again. Lord, increase our faith. Give us faith that will move mountains. Give us faith that's stronger than any, any type of insulin or chemo or mental depression or illness that is. Give us victory over every addiction, every situation, every ailment. God, I'm going to ask you to do something for these people, my members, the sheep you've given me, and the visitors that have come. God, for the next three days, pray for us. Oh, y'all, Lord, for the next three days, Jesus, pray for us. You pray for Peter. Pray for me. Because I know, Lord, if any prayer is sure, it's the words that come from your mouth. Pray for our children, Jesus. Pray for our businesses. Pray for everything we set our hearts to do if it's in your will. Let thy will be done in every life in this church. This is a sincere moment where you can feel the strength becoming stronger than the frustration. Let God fix it. Let him fix it. He's stronger than any of us. He's wiser than all of us put together. Father, we give it to you. If you can do it, it won't get done. 
Thank you for victory. I said thank him for victory. Yeah. 